With the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction happening this week, I want to take a look at one of the biggest no-shows in the Rock Hall's history, Van Halen. Or maybe this should be called a partial no-show. The year was 2007 and the members of the Rock community who inducted Van Halen would have a similar set of circumstances happen half a decade later when the time came for their own induction. Today, let's explore the full story. In 2007, The Rock Hall would induct several acts including R.E.M., Patti Smith, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, The Ronettes, and today's topic, Van Halen. That night, The Rock Hall would be inducting the David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar era of the band. Van Halen's last tour would wrap up in 2004 with Sammy Hagar fronting the band, and it ended on pretty bad terms, with the singer leaving the group shortly after. Side note, I've done a whole video on that tour, the link is down below. Meanwhile, bassist Michael Anthony would leave the band around 2006, being replaced by guitarist Eddie Van Halen's son Wolfgang. Inducting Van Halen that night would be supergroup Velva Revolver. Side note, I've done a whole video on Velva Revolver's rise and fall, the link is down below. It would mark the second time the supergroup would be asked to induct a band into the Rock Hall in just two years. The first band they were asked to induct was the Sex Pistols in 2006, but the Pistols were a no-show, releasing a statement to the Rock Hall that read, Next to the Sex Pistols, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a piss stain. Your museum, urine and wine, we're not coming. We're not your monkey and so what? Fame at $25,000 if we paid for a table or $15,000 to squeak up in the gallery goes to a non-profit organization selling us a load of old famous. Congratulations if you voted for us, hope you noted your reasons. You're anonymous as judges, but you're still music industry people, we're not coming, the statement would read. Something similar happened the following year to Van Halen. No members of the current lineup showed up to the ceremony, and the only people who did show up were Sammy Hagar and Michael Anthony. Meanwhile, Van Halen's third singer Gary Sharon would be excluded by the Rock Hall and commented on his exclusion saying, To answer the few fans who were wondering whether I should or shouldn't be included, while yes I was a small part of their history, I was certainly not a part of their legend and that is what we the fans are celebrating. Meanwhile, Sammy Hagar would tell MTV his thoughts on Gary Sharon being excluded saying, I got nothing against Gary, but I would have voted against him getting in. David Lee Roth and I were in the band for so long and we sold so many records, I don't think you can deny that. As it stands, it seems a little goofy if you let Gary in because there was questions about me getting in because I've only been in the band 21 years. It was initially reported that all the members of Van Halen who were being inducted that year would be in attendance according to premier radio networks. The outlet revealed that all the inductees had already reserved a table, but stressed that Eddie and his brother Alex would not be performing. The induction ceremony took place on March 12, 2007 in New York City, and by late 2006 and early 2007, there were rumblings of a Van Halen reunion with David Lee Roth. Four days before the induction ceremony was set to happen, guitarist Eddie Van Halen announced that he was entering rehab. It was also around this time that frontman David Lee Roth confirmed the reunion, revealing the band would be hitting the road that summer. The guitarist would release a statement that read, I have always and will always have a responsibility to give you my best. At the moment, I do not feel that I can give you my best. That's why I've decided to enter a rehabilitation facility to work on myself, so that in the future I can deliver the 110% that I feel I owe you and want to give you. He would add, Some of the issues surrounding the 2007 Van Halen tour are within my ability to change and some are not. As far as my rehab is concerned, it is within my ability to change and change for the better, he'd write. It was during a 1995 interview with Rolling Stone magazine that the guitarist revealed he'd already went to rehab twice. In the same interview, he revealed he once got arrested for driving under the influence after leaving an AA meeting after hearing people's horrific sob stories stating, I always got hammered to be able to cope. I have zero social skills and I don't know how to act, so I get drunk and I make a real ass out of myself. By April of 2007, Eddie would leave the treatment facility, thus forcing him to skip the Hall of Fame induction. His brother would follow suit staying close to his sibling to lend him support. It was initially reported that David Lee Roth would be in attendance with Sammy Hagar and Michael Anthony, but disputes between Roth and Velvet Revolver led him to pulling out. Velvet Revolver frontman Scott Weiland would reveal the reason behind the dispute, recalling backstage at the Rock Hall, we were asked to perform. Kind of what happened was David Lee Roth wanted to sing the song Jump. We felt from an artistic standpoint, and I'm being totally honest with you, that it wasn't a song we felt comfortable with. 
we don't have keyboards. To bring a keyboard on stage wouldn't work for us. We said we'd do Jamie's Crying or You Really Got Me and he was adamant that that wasn't okay. Roth, for his part, would release a statement to the LA Times I read. It's just not an option for me to go and watch some other band who are only performing because they have some new record coming out to do our music. I have nothing against Velvet Revolver. I'm not familiar with their music, but that was my three minutes and 22 seconds up there he'd reveal. The Rock Hall, meanwhile, put out their own statement that read, The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is sorry that David Lee Roth will not attend this year's induction of Van Halen, we offered him opportunities to play and sing a Van Halen song of his choice with our house band, including his own guitar player, or a song with Velvet Revolver, and he refused those opportunities. Velvet Revolver would end up covering two Van Halen songs as part of the induction ceremonies, including the David Lee Roth era 1978 hit, Ain't Talking About Love, and the Sammy Hagar era song, Runaround. Meanwhile, Hagar and Anthony would get on stage to perform Why Can't This Be Love. So what did Sammy Hagar think of the whole thing? Well, in a 2009 interview he gave to Thiago Sarkis, he would slam Roth's behavior in the run-up to the ceremony, saying, I know the guys in that band, referring to Velvet Revolver. Dave was calling them up every day, driving them crazy to get them to let him sing with them. That's why I got all screwed up, because Dave wanted to do it his way, and they were only allowed to do two songs, and he was trying to do two songs with them and not me. Dave was playing his BS Dave games, and he effed it all up. And because they told him, no, Sammy's going to sing a song, and you're going to sing a song with Velvet Revolver, and Dave said, F you, then I'm not coming. If you guys remember five years prior, Hagar and Roth would do a tour together, and I've done a whole video on that tour. The link is down below. In the same interview, Hagar would go on to criticize Velvet Revolver's performance, which a lot of people did. He would reveal, I don't think it was very good, and I really like those guys. It was unfair to take a young band like that, that had only been together for one album, and try and make them be Van Halen. I think it was a little bit of a mistake, but it wasn't their fault. They're great, and I like those guys a lot. They're really good friends. Slash is a great guitar player when he's playing his stuff, but for Slash to try and play Eddie's stuff was wrong. They should have had a legend induct and put together a great bunch of guitar players who were more adapted to Van Halen to do the tribute he'd say. The Rock Hall induction would end up proving to be a mess, and it was foreshadowing of what would happen to Velvet Revolver, who broke up a year later. In addition to that, it would also foreshadow Guns N' Roses induction ceremony that took place five years later in 2012. From and Axl Rose was still on bad terms with Slash and was a no-show and even sent an open letter requesting that he not be inducted. But following Guns N' Roses induction that year, Slash would tell the Star Tribune his thoughts on the Van Halen induction and how it compared to his own experience, revealing, The Van Halen induction was a nightmare. It wasn't fun and we were potentially a mirror image of that. Now at this point, GNR's induction is something that I'm really happy I did because it was very close to not happening at all. It turned out that in the moment, it was a really positive and fulfilling experience, he would say. In 2020, Eddie Van Halen would pass away due to a stroke while also battling cancer for half a decade. During the virtual 2020 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony a month after his death, a tribute would be held to the Van Halen guitarist. Guns N' Roses slash Metallica's Kirk Hammett and Rage Against the Machine's Tom Morello would partake in the tribute. During an appearance on The Howard Stern Show in November of 2020, his son Wolfgang announced that Van Halen would not continue without his father, saying, You can't have Van Halen without Eddie Van Halen. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.